Roasted acorn squash is a favorite fall and winter dish in our household. Serve them as wedges for a side dish or stuff them with a savory vegetable filling as a main course. Either way, this simple, no-fuss recipe is a crowd pleaser. This dish is as easy to cook for a family as it is for one or two people. Try this and you'll find yourself making it again and again. Before we begin, please remember to like this video and subscribe to my channel. All of the ingredients for this recipe can be easily found in most major grocery stores. This quinoa recipe will stuff three whole squashes, that is six servings. I'm only serving two in this video, so the remaining quinoa can also be used as a side dish with any meal or as a light lunch by itself. Begin by preheating your oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. I have all the ingredients, including the ingredients for the stuffing arranged on the table. First, wash the exterior of the squash. You can take the edge of your chef's knife to knock off the stem of the squash, which makes it easier to cut down the center. I've prepared the raisins in advance. I took one half cup raisins. I prefer golden, but I used black in this recipe because that's what I had on hand. And I covered them in boiling water. You can either place the raisins in a heat proof bowl and cover it with water, then microwave it for 30 seconds to one minute just until the water begins to boil, and then set it aside to cool. Or if you don't want to use a microwave, you can boil some water in a saucepan on your stovetop and pour it over your raisins. With a spoon, remove the seeds. If you're cooking organic squash, which is what I always recommend, you can keep these seeds for your garden for later in the summer. Now we'll combine the spices. We have one quarter teaspoon cardamom, one half teaspoon cumin, one half teaspoon coriander, one half teaspoon cinnamon. I use Ceylon cinnamon, but use whatever you like. One quarter teaspoon of turmeric, one quarter teaspoon of ground black pepper, and one quarter teaspoon of red chili powder. You can use cayenne pepper if you prefer. If you don't care for spicy curry, you can delete the hot peppers altogether. Stir together to fully incorporate. The spice will also be part of your curried quinoa. Take the olive oil and using as little as possible, Rub all of the surfaces of the squash, interior and exterior, with the oil. You can see I've cut away some bad spots on the squash. The reason I decided to do this video now is because I had this acorn squash that was in danger of spoiling if I didn't use it soon. As you can see from the outer skin, it isn't as dark as it should be and it is threatening to yellow. It's still perfectly fine to eat, but I wish I had made it a week ago. Still, this will show you clearly how to make this dish. Next, do the same with the maple syrup by covering only the golden flesh of the squash, allowing the excess maple syrup to pool into the bottoms of each squash half. Now sprinkle, uh-oh, the spoon didn't work so well, <laughs> the spice mixture into the flesh of the squash. Place the squash onto a baking sheet lined with a nonstick silicone mat or a piece of parchment paper. Place into a 400 degree preheated oven. Cook for 15 minutes. At the same time, you can toast your almonds if you don't already have almonds on hand that are already toasted. 
This will take only about three minutes at this temperature, so be sure to keep a close eye on the almonds. I have to admit I burned two batches of almonds while taping this because I became distracted and didn't watch them closely enough. So don't do that. Drain the water from your soaking raisins into a two cup measuring cup. Add enough water to bring the liquid to one and a half cups. Set aside the raisins and the raisin water. Place a two quart saucepan on the stove top. Rinse your quinoa in a metal sieve or a uh, strainer and add that to your saucepan. Pour in the raisin water and turn the heat on medium high. Add the one half cup raisins, one half cup fresh or frozen corn, and one half cup frozen peas. I nearly forgot the carrots, so I quickly peeled and sliced one and a half cups of carrots and added them as well. Oops. Don't judge me by my burned and battered cutting board. I've had it since I was in college over 40 years ago, and it has been my faithful friend through many years of cooking mishaps. It is still my go-to cutting board. I never want to be without it. Okay, now stir in the remaining spices. Cover and bring to a boil. Reduce the heat and simmer for 25 minutes or until tails begin to form on the quinoa. That's how you can tell when quinoa is ready. It grows tails. Pull the almonds out of the oven and transfer them to a cool bowl to stop cooking. If you leave them in the pan to cool, they will surely burn in the hot pan. When I say that the quinoa grows tails, this is what I mean. If you look closely at it, instead of looking like a round seed, it now has a little little tail that wraps around it. So this is what you look for. When the quinoa is done, stir in one half cup cilantro and the almonds, reserving a little of both to use as garnish. When 15 minutes have passed from the time you place the squash into the oven, pull out the squash and test them with a fork. Check for doneness. If the flesh of the squash is resistant to the fork, return to the oven for another 10 to 15 minutes or until the flesh can be easily pierced with a fork. And with a pastry brush or a spoon, scoop up the maple syrup at the bottoms of the squash and brush or bathe the sides with, with the excess syrup. When the squash is fully cooked, pull them out of the oven and plate them. With a large spoon, scoop out the quinoa and generously fill the cavities of the squash halves with the curried quinoa. They do not have to be returned to the oven as everything is fully cooked. Garnish with toasted almonds and cilantro. I like to add a little marinated broccoli salad or some other green vegetables on the side for color and additional nutrition. So there you have it, roasted acorn squash with curried quinoa.